Hello everyone, welcome back to another video. Slightly different video from normal, I'm actually going to be doing a car review on this stunning Mark 8 Golf GTI. This Golf GTI has been given to us for the weekend by First Flexi Lease. So big thanks to First Flexi Lease for loaning us this car for the weekend where we've been able to shoot some content on for both our benefits and their benefits and also being able to take this to Refuel event which is a local car show where we did get some more content on this as well. So I've actually been lucky enough to have been using this car all weekend, shooting various amounts of different content on it, getting some photos, getting some video and I've been able to get a really good experience on this Golf GTI. Now car reviews is not something that I'm really that good at. I'm not that knowledgeable with um, all the technical specifications of cars but I do know my fair bit. I'm going to create some new content this year where I'm doing my own personal take on car reviews where it's sort of a bit more personal to you where you can experience a little bit more of the car um, show you a little bit more about the cars that I review and um, give you basically a more truer um, review compared to normal. There's some really good car reviews out there and I'm not knocking any of them. There's some people that know everything about the cars, all the specifications, whereas I'm going to do a bit more review on like the daily lifestyle of living with one of these cars. Just so if there is anyone interested in buying a, a Mark 8 Golf GTI or if there is anyone buying any of the cars that I look at doing reviews, you can get a bit more of a, a deep insight into using that car as an everyday vehicle because I, I get that you want to know the specifications of how quick it is, what engine it is and stuff like that, but I presume if you're looking at buying this sort of car, you already know that sort of stuff. Whereas I'm just going to be showing you a couple of little features that it has, what it's like to drive around in, how practical it is, and some of the benefits that you might not know that this car has. So what I'm going to do is just show you some of the detailed bits of this car, and show you some of the um, features that this car in particular has, and talk to you through about the driving experience and the overall, and the overall living experience with having one of these cars. Because like I said, I had this for two days and to be fair, this car's absolutely blown my mind. So what I'm going to do, show you some of the details on this car, show you some of the inside features on this car, take it for um, a couple of little drives, showing you what it drives like and talking to you about my experience with this Mark 8 Golf GTI. So we'll start off with the overall look of the Mark 8 Golf GTI. Now the Mark 8 is very Marmite, some people love it, some people hate it. I personally love it. I've never really been a massive Golf fan to be fair, I've been in a few Golf R's before and they blew my mind. But I'm not really a massive golf fan. Um, I know there are some true Volkswagen golf fans, and as they start to get a bit newer, more and more golf fans have started to fall out of love with them. I think the most popular golf range was the 7.5, where you get the 7.5 GTI and the 7.5 Golf R, which are still really nice cars. But since the Mark 8 Golf GTI came out, it's been very marmite. A lot of people hate it, and a lot of people do love it at the same time. I personally love it. I like all the features that it has. I like the the new look that it has. There's been some subtle tweaks that look really nice such as the GTI badges. I like all the angles of the panels, it looks really, really nice, this car. Compare this to a um, Mark 7.5, a lot of people prefer the 7.5, but I, I do really like the Mark 8. Now there's some features that are carried over with the Golf, um, which you'd expect, obviously the overall look does look pretty much the same. It's been sort of um, smoothed out in some areas and it does look a bit meaner in some areas, but some people don't like that. But I think it's all to do with change. I'm a massive Range Rover fan, and they've obviously brought up the new Range Rover. I wasn't too sure on it at first, but the more I look at it, the more it's growing on me. But I think overall, the Mark 8 Golf has a really good presence, both front and rear. What I'll do, I'll show you some in detailed shots just so you can see that, and we'll talk about some of the features that this car in particular has. So I'm hoping the camera's going to pick it up, but the Mark 8 GTI has got a really nice front light system. So obviously on the newer Golfs, you've got this nice light bar, which I personally think looks epic, especially at night. And we've also got these honey, honeycomb fog lights, which look really cool. We managed to take some really nice photos of this last night once it was starting to get dark. And with the fog lights, it makes this car look absolutely awesome. It lets off a lot of light as well, which is absolutely ideal. These lights as well are all adaptive. It's a cool, really nice feature to have. Um, the new technologies in cars is absolutely incredible. I'm not that clued up with some of the features of this car. I'm not that clued up with most features of all cars. Um, but I'll basically just try and talk to you about some of the features that I've come across whilst using this car for the weekend. But obviously, you can probably spec different options on this car to have maybe more options on, on the light settings and stuff than what you could from standard. Um, but that's something that you'd have to look at when you're specking this car if you're looking at buying it. But overall, the front end, I personally think looks absolutely amazing. I love the lights, I love the light bar, and I love the honeycomb light system on the grills. Another really cool feature I absolutely love on the newer cars is the lights. 
I think the lights when they blink when you're indicating look absolutely amazing which is what this one has. I just think that looks so cool. So let's do a little walk around of the car just so you can see it in a bit more detail. I think the wheels look absolutely amazing. I wasn't too sure on the design at first, but I think the more that you look at it, the more, the more cool it actually looks. And I think from every angle of this car, it just looks amazing. I prefer this definitely to the older Golfs, and I'd love to see what this one's like compared to the R as well. So we're now onto the interior on this car. It's actually a really nice play, place to be in. It's not too, there's not too many features, but there's just enough to be able to navigate your way around. There is some plastic bits which are a little bit fiddly, like some of the lighting system and stuff and some of the dials on the front, it's all plastic based, as well as being on the steering wheel as well, which can be a little bit fiddly sometimes. Sometimes it's not as res responsive as probably what it could be. Sometimes you sort of are double touching and double tapping um, just to be able to touch stuff, but it's not too bad to use. It's got touchscreen and stuff, which is absolutely ideal as well. It's got everything on there that you need and, and you've got all the settings to change the lights and stuff on the right hand side there, which is quite cool. And most of the stuff you can do on the steering wheel as well, which is perfect. So it's actually got a really nice steering wheel as well. It's flat bottomed. It's got some nice knobbly bits as well, which actually when you're driving it in sport mode, feels really nice. You feel like you're proper planted as well, which is quite cool. In the center console bit, you've got this tiny little um, gear stick, the automatic gear stick, the DSG, which I like actually. I think when you've got a big gear stick, I think it just looks a bit too much. This is really simple. It's really easy to use. Um, which is ideal and obviously you've got electric handbrake there as well. As well as that you've got some features, you've got some places to put your phone, charge your phone, you've got a couple of USB-C's and stuff and then you've got all the dials on there to change it from eco, comfort, sport or individual. A couple of cup holders as well which is ideal and a place to charge the key. So other than that, in the driver's position you've not really got much else. You've got everything that you need to, everything's quite easy to reach to, everything's quite easy to get to which is what you want when you're driving. There's nothing worse than having to faff around with certain things. But like I said, with some of the plastic bits, sometimes you are a little bit, um, sometimes you sort of like double tapping and stuff like that, which is not really what you want, but it's one of them. You don't, you don't really notice it that much. It's just sometimes when you're trying to touch things and stuff, you just want it to respond straight away. Other than that, for the driver's position, you've not got too much else, to be fair. It is a really nice position to be in. This car in particular doesn't have electric seats. Um, I don't know if you can spec it with electric seats. You probably can, but I suppose it's one of them. Um, do you really need electric seats? I'm not too sure. Sometimes it looks a bit better, um, but do you need it? I'm not, not sure to be fair. Got the tartan seats as well um, continued throughout the car with a little bit of suede Alcantara. But all the GTI range have got these tartan seats and I absolutely love it. I'm glad that they keep, they've keep they kept that along because it just breaks it up a bit. There's nothing worse than with some cars, if you look at like some of the BMWs and stuff, and it's just black leather. It looks like the same black leather as, as for the last 10 years. and it doesn't really do anything for me, whereas when you sit in seats like this, there's nice bucket seats, um, nice Alcantara bucket seats with the uh, tartan inserts, I think it just looks epic. And when you're getting in and out of it, you really feel that you're getting in something quite special, which is what you expect with a Golf GTI. But like I say, there are some cars that are quite like, you do have some cars, I don't know, some maybe some S-Line Audis, um, or some like S3s and stuff, some of the seats can be a little bit naff, um, but I, I do really like these bucket tartan slash Alcantara um, seats. You might also be wondering what it's like for a backseat passenger. It's actually quite comfortable, you're quite upright, which is what I like. There's nothing worse than being too slouched because if I've got a bad back. Um, but the seats throughout are really comfortable. I couldn't imagine being uncomfortable on a long journey either, which is quite nice for anyone in the back. Um, and even being in the front, to be fair, we've been driving around all weekend. At not one point have I been driving around and thinking, actually, this is really uncomfortable to drive around in. I haven't really wanted to get out of this car. Every time I'm in it, I never want to leave being in this car, which is kind of what you want when you do want a car like this. And I've actually cleaned so many of these GTIs and I underestimated actually how nice they were. When I'm actually cleaning them and stuff, you don't realize all the features that it has. You don't realize how comfortable it is. You don't realize how nice it is to actually drive around in it. It's just comfortable to be in. And I can imagine if you've got a couple of passengers, it would be just as nice as well. I think overall in this car, it's quite a nice experience being in it. And yeah, you, you don't feel too cramped. It's a nice small hatchback, but you don't feel too too cramped, which is quite cool. You can only get this car in a five door, I'm pretty sure. So it's not that you have to be um, trying to get in behind on the back of the seats. Obviously five door, jump straight in, jump straight out, and it's ideal. Obviously most important thing at the back as well, got two cup holders as well, which is what you need. One for your bottle of Coke or whatever, which is ideal. But uh, other than that, it's quite nice. You've got two pockets in the backs of the seat, so you can stick your phone or whatever in there. And there's also a little back pocket thing. But other than that, obviously you've got air conditioning down there. You've got some places to charge your phone for the back seat, um, for the back seat people or the back seat drivers. 
Um, but other than that, you don't really need too much in the back. As long as they're comfortable, as long as they've got a place to charge their phone um, and put their food and their drink, then that, that's it. That's all the back passengers need. Right, so you're now joining me in the Golf GTI. Just change the seat position. I've got everything I need. Let's not leave any cameras behind or anything. So I'll talk to you a little bit about um, this car, what it's like to drive and stuff. Hopefully the camera don't fall off because I'm not actually using the GoPro. But this car is so smooth. I absolutely love it. I literally don't want to leave this car. It's, everything about it is just so smooth. So I'm currently in Sport, um, but we'll switch over to Comfort as well. So we'll put it into Comfort quick. But so just about to take the Golf GTI out and show you a little bit about it, show you what it's like and talk to you in a, about it in a little bit more detail. So let's head out, got seatbelt on, got everything on, need to stick it in drive, that would help. So this car is absolutely amazing to drive around. It's so comfortable. Like I said earlier, I don't want to get out of this car. Everything about it is just really nice. In comfort, it's got the comfort there when you need it. You could just sort of cruise around in it. And then when you do want to sort of unleash the beast as such, um, you can just stick it into sport and it will go. And this car just wants to keep going and going. I'm absolutely in love with this car, to be fair. I've not really got anything to compare it to because of the fact of, obviously I don't have a personal car myself. I'm not really out in cars that much. Um, so I don't really have anything to compare it to, but I feel like I've been sort of set the standard right up there. And the next thing I sort of use or go to probably won't be as good because this is sort of like a hot hatch. It's got everything that you want it to. It's got the city driving when you want it, and then if you do want to sort of give it some beans at any point, it will, and it and it trust me, it will as well. So drive around a little bit. So just talk to you about some of the stuff that it might have in case you want to know about that. Like I said, the driving position is really nice. It's nice and comfortable. There's not been a time in this car where I thought that I've been uncomfortable. And I need to sort that out. So unfortunately, I can't actually drive and film this car because I haven't actually got my GoPro on me so this camera won't actually stay in position but i just thought i'd talk to you through about some of the things that obviously i love about driving this car around um it's really comfortable to drive around like i've been saying and it's not made me really want to get out of it i'm used to being in a van all day every day i haven't got another car to compare it to um so there could be other cars that are a lot better than this but i think overall as a daily runner you can use this every single day it's got the comfort there where you want it you could just sort of cruise around where you are um, I could cruise around at Exeter in this easily. And then when I do, I'm in, I'm in a bit of a rush to say, and I do want to get around a little bit quicker without exceeding, exceeding the speed limit, obviously. Um, there's got that power there just to obviously get, get you places a little bit quicker. This car's like the best of both worlds with everything. It's got everything that you possibly could think of and need a car to have to daily run around in. If you obviously you are driving around in sport, um, the fuel economy is going to go down a lot more. Um, we've noticed that a few times where we've, put it in sport to get some um, videos and stuff like that with we've literally put our foot down once and then you lose five miles straight away it makes me think i wonder how you'd have to have a serious amount of money to be, even be able to afford cars like this i've got mates that have got really nice cars and i just think how are you even affording to drive around in these sort of cars especially the way that some people drive because watching the fuel gauge go down and down and down i mean we put 40 quid in it this weekend um, and i'll try and see the data to see when I last filled up and stuff um, since refuel. I well, don't say for some reason, but normally you can see when, how many miles you've done. I'll see if it figures it out. So I can actually see how, since the last refuel, how many miles I've actually done. So I've got 45 miles left in the tank. Reckon say that I've done 102 miles, which is a lot to be fair. I've done 100 miles since yesterday. I suppose we're in Dartmoor and stuff, we've done quite a lot, but that's a lot of miles. Average 18 miles per hour, average MPG is 22.5 miles to the gallon. And now I thought my van was bad. My van does about 34, and I complain about that. And at 22.5 miles per, to the gallon, yeah, that's, I don't know whether I could afford to run around in these all the time. This car is not the sort of car that you just cruise around in all the time because it just wants to keep going and going and going. It's got that power there, there when you need it sort of thing. So it does make you naturally want to put your foot down a bit. Obviously, this is not actually my car. I haven't been thrashing it around because like I said, it's not my car. I've got to look after it. If it was my car, I'd probably be hooning it around a lot more and it'd probably be more like 15 miles to the gallon or something like that. But obviously, this is not my car, so I can't go around absolutely launching it around everywhere. But um, there's been times where we've sort of 
picked it up a little bit for some um, videos and stuff and this car does go about 22.5 miles to the gallon i don't know if i had enough money i probably would i was speaking to felix i don't know whether i'd actually as much as i really like this car and i was had that money sort of daily drive it i'm not too sure i'd actually get one I can see what the fuss is about, to be fair, I, I can fully get, and I can imagine in a Golf R as well, that this car is absolutely epic, um, and it puts a smile on my face every time I get in this car. But if I had the money, I don't think I'd have one, because I'm one of them, I, I like my Range Rover Sport, um, I like the SVR, obviously. If I had the money to run that, then that would be my daily driver, but obviously that, I dread to think what the miles per gallon is like in that. If this is a two litre, and it's doing 22.5 miles to the gallon, you imagine what a five litre V8 Range Rover SVR is doing. So I'd have to be making a serious amount of money to even be able to justify running around in one of them. But I appreciate this is not really like a proper car review. It's a bit of an in-depth insight into what I think and what I love about this GTI. Obviously there might be GTIs in different specs and stuff. Obviously you can get the Club Sport and all that sort of stuff, but obviously this is just a normal GTI that's been spec by First Flexi Lease. It's got a couple of little extras on it, which I really like. Um, and this is just my experience. Obviously I'll get a bit more clued up with cars and their specifications and stuff as I go along. I'm in the detailing business, I just clean cars. A lot of people think that I know everything about cars. I know the features of cars and I know exactly what they do and all that sort of stuff. And I, I know cars as a whole, but when it comes around to technical specifications, I'm not really that clued up. And I think with like car reviews and stuff, there's plenty of car reviews out there that tell you the zero to 60 times, what engine it's got on it, what this, what that. I know nothing really about anything inside the engine bay. I know what parts are what, but when people start talking to me about like torque and all this sort of stuff and whacking turbos and hybrid turbos, it just goes over my head. It, maybe it's something that I'm gonna educate myself this year, but it's not something at the minute that I currently know anything about. But this was basically just give you an insight into what I thought of the Golf GTI over the last couple of days and show you a bit in depth some of the features because I appreciate not everyone gets to be up close to a car like this. There might be some people that are a lot younger than me watching this who might want to experience getting out in cars and stuff and want to know a little bit more about some of the features that these sort of cars have. Um, and then yeah, just show you a bit of an insight into it because I obviously I appreciate that not everyone get the opportunity to be around cars like this. And it'd be cool to get more cars on the channel and sort of stuff like that. And if this sort of content is what you want to be watching, then obviously please do let me know. I'm trying to mix it up this year with the content that I'm doing. I don't want to keep it solely detailing related. I do want to start doing more car reviews, but at the same time with the car reviews, obviously I've got to get a little bit better doing that. This is my first one. I wouldn't really call it a review. It's just more like an insight into, into what I think of the Golf GTI really. But that being said, absolutely amazing car. Absolutely love it. Obviously this car is through First Flexi Lease, so if you're looking at leasing a car, then give the guys at First Flexi Lease a shout, I'll put the link down below as well. Um, they should be able to sort you out. They do a wide range of leasing on cars, vans, and all that sort of stuff. Um, so if, maybe if a lease deal is something that you're after on a car like this, and then um, you can check out First Flexi Lease maybe. Looking at finding a bit more about First Flexi Lease, and obviously check them down below. But I'll try and get a few more um, cars on the channel to review. Maybe we'll get some like, uh, everyday cars, um, sports cars, and all that sort of stuff. Try and mix up what cars, if there's any cars in particular that you'd like me to go out in and shoot, and then um, obviously please do let me know. We're trying to just get right on it with the car content this year, trying to do as much as possible, trying different avenues to see what works and stuff. I'm trying different avenues to see what works for the YouTube side of it and hopefully just see where it goes. I appreciate it's not for everyone, everyone likes the detail and stuff, but me personally, I've got to go with what I like doing and sometimes I don't like always doing detailing related videos. I'm doing it every single day of the week. Um, it's my full-time business and um, sometimes it's nice to take a little break away of it. And being the chance to be in cars like this, because. This time, sort of five, six years ago, I'd never thought I'd be taking out a car like this and be able to, able to sort of get some content on it for both my sake, Felix sakes, and first flexi leases. So it's really nice to look back. Um, it's really nice to have this, even have this experience for this weekend to be able to use this car. But I'm gonna call it a day there. Hopefully you've liked this car, seeing what it's about. Um, hopefully you will enjoy another video that we're looking at doing, which is a bit behind the scenes of um, some content that we've been shooting. Any thoughts on these type of videos, then please obviously do let me know. Any feedback will be much appreciated as always. So yeah, check out all of our social medias. Obviously check out my social medias, Talisy underscore May, Talisy underscore D. Tell them on TikTok and all that random stuff. Check out Captured Cars, which is Felix. So Felix has got his own business page, which is Felix North Over Photography. And he's also starting his new car channel or his new car channel on Instagram, which is Captured Cars. And obviously do check out First Flex CDs as well for any sort of leasing deals and find out about sort of the cars that they're getting in as well. So yeah. Hope you've liked that. I'm going to call it a day now because I still need to go back and clean this before I hand it back. I'll see you guys and girls on the next one. Ciao.